Well, how great is this, Wolf? We're just in here talking about I don't even know what. Luis Gonzalez walks by. Now he's here it's in studio. It's Gonzo. It's just Gonzo, no big deal. Gonzo's just walking around the newsroom out there, grabbing a donut. It's like one of those old Sports Center commercials. It's just like, hey, here's a newsroom, and here's Luis Gonzalez walking through it. Gonzo, what's going on, man? What's happening? I was walking by. Hey, is that Luke and Wolf in there? I'm going to stop in. <laughs> Aaron's like, you can't go in right now. You can't go in. Man, thank you for doing that. How you been? I'm doing great. Thank you. Okay, a little crazy right about now. It right? is. It is. We got, uh, what, two more hours, or an hour and 57 minutes until... Uh, yeah. Till the deadline. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on at our ballpark and the, kind of the command center, and guys are trying to work something out, see, trying to make the team better. We've talked to Mike Hazen a lot throughout the last month or so, really, I guess all season, and we played audio from him earlier today where he was saying, you know, this, you start making calls a few weeks ago, yeah. but you know probably nothing's going to happen. But when does it get to the point? It seemed like it kind of started to flip around Friday or Saturday yeah. around the league where stuff just starts happening. The problem is there's so many teams that are still in contention. You know, there's teams that were flipping from sellers to now they're buyers and vice versa. So um, it made it difficult. I think we're going to have to buy Hayes in a new set of tennis shoes because he's worn out the bottoms going from that office over to Derek Hall to talk to Ken and see what they're going to do back and forth. And he's doing a lot of pacing right now. But uh, – it's an, I mean, it's an exciting conversation for our club to have because we're in contention. And, uh, you know, we were talking during the break. Nobody expected us to be here right now where we're at. So we're playing with house money right now, and hopefully we get some other acquisitions maybe in the next hour and a half, two hours, to maybe bolster our club even better. And if we don't, um, you know, the young kids are going to have to step up and keep playing the way they were in the first half. Right. You know, when, when I think about that coming in, the expectations, it's so important you have expectations. I would imagine it's important as a skipper. I would imagine it, it's important as a general manager, as an organization, to have certain amount of expectations going in as to whether or not you're living up to those expectations or superseding them. And you guys definitely superseded the expectation, I think, for the most part. Does that actually work against you if you're Mike Hazen now at the trade deadline because you know you're probably a year ahead of schedule. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we went from the regular driving lane to the express lane now and then, but I think with that, it brings confidence to our young players and they realize now that uh, they're not playing for, you know, their job for next year. They're playing to compete now to get to the playoffs, which makes it more of a team game, which makes it even better in the clubhouse. Because I've played on a lot of bad teams, and Wolf, you have too. Yeah, I mean, you got that right, PhD in losing. Yeah. <laughs> when you get towards the middle of the season, the end, you know your team doesn't have a chance. You're playing for you. You're playing to show what you can do now. If it's not for that team, it's for another team out there so looking true. at you. And you don't want that to happen going into September. You want your guys to be dialed in playing for us instead of for I. And I think that's that's one of the main things that we have to keep these young players locked in on. And, uh, you know, we're going out there and we've made a couple trades yesterday and um, lost some great kids that we really feel highly of. But you got to do that to make your team better. And at the same time, you got to show the guys in the locker room, right. we're doing something to try to – to pick up the pace here and the fans here they want to see it i mean once you start winning you get spoiled and you want to win more and you get greedy and you get selfish and that's a, that's not a bad thing sometimes in sports yeah we got luis gonzalez here gonzo you just kind of touched on it you you make the trade for paul seawald and yes you have to give up guys the, like i mean josh rojas is I, I, pretty well regarded as like the first local guy who grew up watching the diamondbacks right to play for the diamondbacks so that's tough and you you give up pieces but to get a closer that sends a message to your guys that have played the first 110 games of this season. Yeah, and you saw it last night. We almost lost another one last night <laughs> late in the game. So, you know, he's not going to come in and be 100% closing every game, game game in and game out, game out because that's what happens in baseball. You can't – I mean, I hope he comes in and he's lights yeah. out, but yeah. realistically the odds of that happening are very slim. But you hope he comes in and just stabilizes everything because now what he does is he anchors the back end. So now you're looking for those other pieces in the eighth inning, seventh inning. So now these guys have roles now that they know. Before, we were having bullpen by committee, closer by committee. So Torrey was doing more of matchups. 
So now we have a lockdown closer. So now you have Seawald in the back now, and now you can kind of build your way back up towards the front of the, that bridge that's in between the starter and the closer. So now these guys now like Chafin or whoever else it might be, now they know their roles are more established now in the bullpen. Gonzo, why do you think they've struggled to the degree in which they have at the dish? Why, why, why are they struggling the way that they have in July? Well, for one, I think a couple of our guys are very streaky. Uh, you know, Gurriel, when he when he got hurt, he pulled his groin right at, right before. I think it was right before the break. He started slowing down a little bit. Yeah, it was before the break. He slowed down, and then he came back, and he just wasn't the same. Mm. Um, and he's still trying to find his groove. Christian Walker was lights out for a while. Then he kind of tailed off a little bit, up and down. Um, Corbin Carroll has been fantastic all year, but he's a rookie. I mean, we're counting on this kid. He's yeah. in the middle of our order. We're putting a lot of eggs in the basket on this guy. You know, we're throwing it all at him and saying, hey, we need you to do this. Need you. He's a young kid, and I don't think a lot of people will really realize that, but he's playing like a true veteran. And, uh, you know, it's just – we need to get a couple of those guys to get hot and stay hot here for the next month and a half, two months, or maybe one of the new guys that we're bringing in, if they can come in and kind of bring a little bit of different energy or a different vibe into the locker room, that'll kind of pump the guys up a little bit. It does sort of feel like we all just assume Corbin Carroll's 29 years old. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Like I mean, we're, we're spoiled. The guys, he's, he's kind of like the Devin Booker of the Suns. I yeah. mean, now he's come in from day one when he's got the opportunity to jump out there and play. You know, last year we, we stopped playing him because we didn't want him to lose his rookie status, understanding that he may have a chance to be rookie of the year. Well, heck, people were talking about him to be in the MVP voting. So yeah. that's a good sign for a young player to be already in that consideration. So here we are. We're an hour and 50 minutes away from the trade deadline coming and going. And I think I'm not betraying you at all by when you walked into the studio, you were like, man, the phones are going crazy yeah. over there. So there's still... They're still working. Arizona Whoa, Sports. Here we go. Breaking news. Uh -oh. Welcome to the first breaking news segment, Gonzo. All right. So according to Ken Rosenthal, the Brewers just got reliever Andrew Chafin. There you go. Wow. I, I wasn't expecting that twist. I wasn't, yeah. Gonzo, your reaction. What do that? we get? Do we get anything? I knew his name was up in some of the trade talks, but... Uh, Man, Aaron, you like to – you scared me. I actually – I jumped out of my seat when that – That's what happens, Gonzo. Oh, my God. Yeah, but you look totally unfazed by the news. We're, Wolf and I are like, what's going on? Gonzo's like, hey, I already knew something. No, I didn't. I didn't. I just looked at my phone to see if I – if somebody shot me a text or something, but I didn't see that one going down yet. So, uh, yeah, that's – I mean, it's part of the game. It's a business. I mean, wow. uh, I got traded one time uh, – just before the deadline to the Cubs when I was playing for the Houston Astros and it was it was it's surreal especially for guys that it happens the first time you think you're going to play your whole career with your team and then it ends up happening and then you realize that it's more of a business so I think players are a little more adapt to it now than it was in the past because in the when we were kids growing up you could name every NFL NBA MLB team all the whole starting lineup for the next six seven years yeah who the quarterback's going to be who the you know the center for a basketball team is and now everything just happens so fast and it changes on a daily basis so um, it doesn't surprise me so it's probably a move that hopefully we'll get something good in return uh, Luis Gonzalez joining us in Studio Gonzo before we let you go. And I'm not looking for names, but with an hour and 45 minutes left, if you had your pick, what sort of – what are you looking for here still just in terms of pitching, hitting, what's, what's the I, plan? I think the pitcher is, is mainly what we would love to have. I, I know Lorenzen was in in the talks and uh, kind of disappointed, I think, to see him go to the – what was it, Phillies? Phillies yeah. So uh, – but I know our – hey, you got to give credit to our guys in the office – and they're working. I mean, they're they're hitting the lines, and I walk by there and I see them. They're they're throwing everything up there to see if they can do something to make this team better. And you got to give them credit for that, whether it happens or not in the next hour and five, 45 minutes or whatever it is. But uh, speaking as a fan and as a guy that works there, I know I know firsthand that they're. They're kicking a lot of tires to see if there's something out there. We don't want to give up the farm. we got some good mm -hmm. players in the minor leagues, but at the same time, if there's something that's going to help this team for this year and possibly next year, or even if it's a rental here for the next two months to make us better and give us an opportunity, they're going to do it. 
Gonzo, we appreciate the time, man. You got a busy day. Thank you, man. You got it, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. That's Luis Gonzalez stopping by right there. A little uh, trade deadline talk.